This is an iOmega zip drive. This is a technology that was very popular in the late 1990s. This device first appeared in 1994 and it remained in production till 2004. Now these came out in various interfaces. Well, the most common was an external drive that had a parallel port so it could connect to your, your printer's parallel port, also known as IEEE 1284. They also made an internal version, one of which had an IDE interface. And I've got one of those right here. It's got the IDE pins right along there. The IDE and the parallel port interfaces are pretty much gone. They, they pretty much disappeared from personal computers in the early 2000s. But fortunately, iOmega made a version with a USB port. So you can continue using your zip drives if you want to. Now this particular model is the Z100 USB-S and it was manufactured in October 22, 2004. This must be nearly one of the last ones manufactured and you could store 100 megabytes on one of these discs. You could also get a version of the drive and the discs which could handle up to 250 megabytes. I occasionally use my ZIP100 for storing small amounts of data. But really, it's, it's pretty outdated these days. For example, we have a 64 gigabyte thumb drive, which I bought for just a few dollars. And it will store 640 times as much as this. But it's still a very interesting retro technology. It still does have some limited applications. Unfortunately, this device has recently failed on me. I'm going to plug it in here. You just hear it spin like that but it won't recognize the drive. It doesn't see the disk. And if I press the eject button, I can't get it out. So first of all, I would like to get this disk out of here because it does contain some important information. Oh, that's interesting. We've got a flashing light. It is aware that there's a disk inside, but it's not reading it and it won't eject it. We have a hard fail going on. So before I do any serious troubleshooting, I'm going to have to get this disk out of here. Is there a way to do this? Well, there is. So we get a close up right here. There's a little hole in that button right there. And taking a small paper clip, give it a push, and out it comes. Okay. So that's how you get out a stuck zip disk. Now that we have the zip disk removed, is there a way that we can remove this plastic lid? Well, it turns out that there is. Right here on the sides, there, there are four tiny little holes here and here on one side and here and here on the other side. Now you take your paper clip and you place it like so. And what you're doing is you're pushing back a little plastic tab. Give it a little push. And it opens up. Give it a little push here. Okay, so that whole side is open. Repeat the process on this side. One and the other. Okay, so all four are open and now we can just slide off the lid and expose the inner workings. This is the motor that spins up the disc itself. And here's our little reed heads right here. And they're driven magnetically back and forth. You have this little arm right here. And as I slide it in, this little arm catches the uh, cover and pushes it aside as we push the disc in. I'm going to go ahead and inject it again so we can kind of see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and eject this. Okay, and so that's what it all looks like. Now, sadly, I have spent quite a bit of time troubleshooting this thing, and I cannot isolate the failure. It is sort of intermittent when I sort of like press on different areas. I get different symptoms, so there's probably a bad connection or a solder joint somewhere. But considering how little this thing is really worth it, how much, you know, how much time am I really going to put into this? With the little utility that it still has, if I really wanted one, I'd 
probably easier just to go on eBay and buy one. These devices did have reliability issues, one of which was the so-called click of death, which nearly ended this company. Now, taking it apart, I, I have had the whole thing apart, and I have to say I'm not really very impressed with the quality of the manufacturer. It's not surprising it failed. I guess it's, it's more surprising that it lasted as long as it did. So if you happen to have this model, the Z100 USB-S, and you have a stuck disk, hopefully you have learned how to eject the disk from this video. Thanks for watching.